So uh, I would like to welcome you to our college conversations with liberal arts colleges um, on behalf of Sage Scholars and our founder, Dr. James Johnston. Um, my name is Jenny Johnson, and I am the Consulting Director of School Counseling and Student Engagement for SAGE. Um, this program is brought to you, I feel like an infomercial here, this program is brought to you by, um, say, uh, by Ready Set College, which is a product of SAGE Scholars, okay? Uh, Ready Set College is a college search engine which will match uh, matching students with careers, including some assessments and majors to appropriate colleges. It is also dedicated, which sets us apart, to providing information on college funding. And we have an in-depth library of useful articles and takeaways. So I would encourage you to take a look at this and to share it with your students. We will put the link in the chat box. Today's presenters, are from some of our premier liberal arts colleges that are members of the Sage Scholars Consortium of Colleges. They are Rachel Schmitzky from as the Associate Vice President of Admission at Hanover College, E.J. Smith, who is our Associate Director of Admissions and Recruitment from Lebanon Valley College, Jen Wang, who is the Vice President for Enrollment from the College of Worcester, Diane Greenwood, the Director of Admissions from Ursinus College. Before we get started, just a little housekeeping. All participants will remain on mute during the program. If you have any questions, and I'm sure you will, please type them into the chat box. There will be a Q&A time at the end of our program. This program is being recorded and will be sent to you after the presentation. This is the first of several Third Thursday College Conversations that we will pre be presenting. The colleges that we'll be presenting in the following months is in February, we'll be having RIT, WPI, and Clarkson to talk about STEM schools. In February, we'll have a group of our art colleges. In March, we'll have a group of schools that really support students with learning disabilities. And then we'll end up our series in either April or May with more colleges with it that are liberal arts. I would now like to turn the program over to Rachel from Hanover College in Indiana. Here you go, Rachel. Thank you, Jenny. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for taking time to meet with us today. Rachel Schmidtke, Associate Vice President for Admission at Hanover College. And I'm excited to um, share more about our institution with you. Let me, I'm sorry about that. Am I sharing my screen? Can you see that? Yep, looks great. Great. So Hanover College, we are in Hanover, Indiana, in southeastern Indiana, right on the border with uh, Kentucky. So we're 45 minutes north of Louisville, uh, right next to Madison, Indiana, if you're familiar with that fun touristy town on the river. But it's a gorgeous place. And actually, it's a jeopardy question. Where on the Ohio River can you see three bins? And that would be Hanover College. Um, our tagline is a place to belong, a person to become. So we're very focused on belonging and community here. We like to say that you will be you, be known and be ready by coming to Hanover. So those are our three big pillars where students are free to be themselves, to explore. It's a small college. We have about a thousand students. So a lot of opportunity to get engaged, to participate and really make a name for themselves, leave their mark on Hanover, and then to be ready for whatever their next step is, whether it's graduate school, their first job or um, some volunteer work or the, the military. And we do that through three key elements. We have integrative learning with our liberal arts curriculum. We have incredible experiential opportunities and career readiness. Integrative learning, meaning that students are studying a broad liberal arts curriculum, as well as getting the focus on their major or majors. We have quite a few students who will combine programs or even create their own 
Um, study abroad internships and research are incredibly popular and widely available to our students. And we have a fantastic career resource center on campus with fantastic networking and an alumni network that's incredibly helpful. As I mentioned, it's a smaller school, a thousand students. So our average class size is 17, 12 to one student to professor ratio. And our students come from all over, from about 21 countries, 18 different states. A majority do come from the tri-state area of Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio, but they really are from all over the world. And our alumni are in 50 countries. So Hanover is everywhere. We have 34 majors. You can create your own if you want to. Some that are a bit more distinctive are engineering. And I say distinctive because it's a little rare to find an engineering program at a smaller liberal arts college, but we do have it. We have very intensive and highly regarded health science programs, including a new doctor physical therapy program that we just launched this year. So that's our only graduate program. Uh, at this moment, we are planning on adding an occupational therapy program as well. And then business scholars, there's a business major, but also a broader umbrella for any student who wants to have that business preparation in addition to whatever their major is. So especially wonderful for maybe those music or art students who also want to have maybe another element to their college experience and their resume. And 95% of our students do participate in experiential learning, meaning they'll take a study abroad trip, they'll have an internship, they'll complete research on or off campus. So we're excited to make that available to all students. Uh, most of our internships are paid. They can be during the school year or during the summer, and we'll help students find those wherever they want them to be. Um, the May term is something that we're really excited about. Um, we have two traditional semesters followed by the month of May in which students take just one class. It could be anything. It could be related to their major. It could be something that's just of interest. And we'll have a number of those that faculty lead abroad. So for instance, students could study um, early Christianity in Rome or Shakespeare in London, fermentation in Ireland. So some really cool opportunities with that May term. And for students who stay on campus, there are also a lot of fun activities. So our famous wiffle ball competition takes place during May term. Students really love that opportunity to be together and to really dig deeply into something that they're interested in. Um, most of our professors have their terminal degrees and we only have faculty teaching courses. We don't have um, grad students or assistants that teach. And that's really a great aspect of Hanover is that connection that faculty make with their students. I just had dinner with one of our professors last night who was telling me she's training with one of her former students that she had 20 years ago, uh, who also, um, she was in her wedding and um, it's just really cool to hear those stories. Uh, we have a, a professor who has actually um, officiated at several of his graduates' weddings. So those connections are really special and important to our community. Study abroad is also very important. Over 60% of our students will study abroad, whether it's for the May term trip or if they want the more immersive experience for a semester. Some of them are language-based, so more of a true immersion, but several are uh, for English speakers. And they actually live abroad there and study at that institution and the credit all transfers back. Uh, there are about 18 programs that we work with regularly, but we're part of the consortium that allows students to study really wherever they wanna go. Uh, we also make sure that they can participate in competitive uh, scholarships for post-grad study like the Fulbright. 70 clubs and organizations. So we really want to make sure students have a lot to do. And most of them are all started by students and they can add them as they wish. And there's quite a variety, whether they're um, really interested in volunteering, the arts are their thing, uh, they want to be in a political group. We have the nitwits if they want to knit. So there's a fun variety of clubs and organizations for students to participate in. Um, music is very popular here. We have at least six different ensembles band, for band, orchestra, and choral programs, a very active theater program. 
Um, so students are really able to, to explore their interests and get some great leadership uh, opportunities through those, those clubs, but also by starting their own. Here are just some fun pictures of campus. We do have a nationally acclaimed bingo program, uh, and we kept it going when we had to be virtual for a few months. There's a picture of all our wiffle ball tournament. Um, we have 650 acres here. It's almost like our own um, natural national state park. Um, so there are four trails, um, 14 waterfalls. Actually, that's a highly contested number. So students like to go out and make their own count. Uh, and we're also right next to the Clifty Falls State Park. So it's a fantastic place uh, for students to get out and enjoy nature. It's a fantastic place for athletes. About 50% of our students are varsity athletes. We have um, 22 different teams. We've won our Commissioner's Cup the past two years through the Heartland Collegiate Conference. So students who are looking for a uh, good balance of being a student athlete will really love Hanover. Uh, rigorous curriculum paired with a very competitive varsity program um, and the opportunity to get involved in as many ways as they want outside of that. Um, great dining on campus. There's one main dining hall, but lots of other food stations. It's all farm to table, so really fresh options. It's a completely residential campus. So all four years, students will live on Hanover's campus, whether it's in our residence halls or duplexes. We just built some new townhouses. We have apartments for students. And anyone thinking about a fraternity or sorority, that's also a popular option. We have um, four different fraternities and four sororities to choose from. Here are just a couple other pretty pictures of our campus and some of our active student life. There you can see our band. Very proud of our musical ensembles. They love to hang out there in their um, hammocks. That's a pretty big popular thing to do when it's beautiful weather. Uh, we have four different ways that students, three different ways that students can apply. There's a binding process that we refer to as early decision, which means this is their top choice and students are committing to Hanover if they apply that way. Um, but we also have th uh, two other deadlines that students can apply by with March 1st being the last deadline. We use the Common App or our own Hanover app and it's free to apply. We're also test optional. So no worries about having to take the ACT or SAT. This is just a quick snapshot of our scholarship ranges. It starts at 22,000 and goes um, well beyond that, but the lowest that you might get as a top student would be 24,000. So our scholarships range into the 30,000 level. We have some competitive scholarships that students can apply for, theater, music. Our Templeton program is a, a social, social justice service-based program. And students who visit and file their FAFSA receive $4,000. So we wanna incentivize people to come and see our beautiful campus. Um, we also have three promises that I wanted to point out. Um, we do promise that anyone who qualifies for the Pell Grant will receive full tuition. We have just locked tuition. So for students um, there who start this fall, their tuition will remain the same all four years. So that will never increase while they're a student here. And we guarantee that students will graduate in four years. If for some reason they don't, then the tuition is on Hanover. We'll pay for it. And 99% of our students are in a job or grad school within seven months of graduation. So we're really pleased with the outcomes that we provide through our experience at Hanover. And I'm happy to take any questions that may come up in the chat. Thank you. Just to make sure everybody gets enough time, it might be good to move on to the next uh, presenter and then save the questions for the end, if that's okay with everybody. All right, AJ. Hi everyone, my name is EJ Smith. I'm the Associate Director of Admission and Recruitment at Lebanon Valley College. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about the who, what, when, where, why, how of Lebanon Valley College. So first and foremost, um, hold on one second. Can you, am I not showing, sharing my screen? 
you are sharing your screen. Okay. You're just not on video, which is okay if you don't want to be. It, it's okay. I find it better actually if I'm not there because then people pay attention more to the screen and what we're saying. Sounds so. good. <laughs> Thanks though. So, um, one second. LVC is a liberal arts college in central Pennsylvania, located just eight miles from downtown Hershey, PA. Unfortunately, we cannot smell the chocolate from where we are, but we are that close. We have a 370 acre campus with about 1700 undergraduate students located in the town of Anvil. We are 30 minutes from the Pennsylvania state capital of Harrisburg and also the city of Lancaster. And we're only about two hours from the major cities of Philadelphia, Baltimore and New York City. If you're looking for a place to hide, Lebanon Valley is probably not the right place for you. Our average class size is 20. Our faculty to student ratio is 10 to 1. And we have many ways to be involved through our Division III athletics, our music programs, or other extracurricular activities. A couple of things that I'll mention is we have a marching band. And in 2023, the New Year's Day of 2023, our marching band will be marching in the New Year's Day parade in a city you may have heard of, London, England. So we are very excited about that. We had the offer to march there just before COVID hit, and unfortunately we had to postpone that. So we have that offer again, and we'll be heading there um, when the year turns from 22 to 23. Something else I'll mention is that we do have in our athletic programs, a men's and a women's ice hockey program and they play in the historic Hershey Park Arena. So if you've heard Will Chamberlain scored 100 points in a basketball game, he actually did it at the Hershey Park Arena, and that's the home of both our men's and women's ice hockey team. We offer over 40 majors here at Lebanon Valley and are always looking to expand our offerings based on what we are seeing in the real world. We offer many majors in the fields of business, things like economics, analytical finance, accounting, in the field of mathematics, from actuarial science to computer science and data, to education, we offer both ECE, early childhood education, special education, and most secondary educations. Really, the only thing we don't offer at this point in time is if you wanted to be a physical education teacher. We offer four music majors in the fields of music business, um, music performance, music education, and audio music production. So if you are interested in music as a major or just interested in music overall, this could be the right place for you. We do have 19 different ensembles, choirs, orchestras, bands, and we offer very vibrant health science uh, offerings. We have a six-year doctoral program in physical therapy. We've had that for over 20 years, and our pass rate overall is 100% pass rate on the certification test. That's all time and a 97% first-time pass rate. We have a athletic training five-year master's program, which has an all-time pass rate and first-time pass rate of 100%, a five-year uh, speech language pathology program, and a very vibrant exercise science program. And we will be starting a new nursing BSN program for our cohort coming in in the fall of 2022. So the picture that you're looking at on the left-hand side is our Arnold Health Professions Pavilion. That is where athletic training, physical therapy, and exercise science are housed, and the right is where our nursing building is. So we do have our own cadaver lab on campus. There are, for good or for bad, 10 months out of the year, cadavers there because many of our students are involved in that lab and really getting firsthand experience as undergrads in that cadaver lab. So we are a liberal arts college, so the big question is always how do we have these great employment-driven majors but hold on to our roots in the liberal arts. And we do this through what we call Constellation LVC. This is our general ed liberal arts curriculum that every student will take regardless of major. And in that, students will gain the transferable skills employers want most, critical thinking, written communication, intercultural competence, quantitative reasoning, applied knowledge, and the ability to solve complex problems by approaching them from multiple perspectives. The Constellation uh, LVC features six main components. First, there is an FYE course. That's taking your first year. It's your first year experience course. 
And the easiest way to explain that, it's an English class on steroids. So it is a four credit course. Three credits are going to be general English, writing, research, those kind of things, things you would take at most institutions. The extra one credit is really an introspective look at our students. We want to make sure they're being healthy. We want to make sure they're in the right major. We want to make sure that they're doing all the things to transition from high school to college and try to alleviate any issues that may trip them up, may cause them to maybe step off a little bit. We will have informative experiences, which is really developing skills for the 21st century. We will have connective experiences where students will, will explore a topic through different areas of natural science, humanities, and social sciences. The one that I always share with families is one that's based on baseball. So students will take courses in the natural sciences. Why does a curveball curve? In the humanities, maybe things over time that have been written about baseball. And then the social sciences. Why can sometimes a catcher not throw back to the pitcher? What's, what's going on in their mind that helps them to not be able to do that? We will have immersive experiences. Students will apply what they learned in the real world. Think clinicals, internships, student teaching, but also opportunities on campus or abroad. Think integrative experiences. This is going to be an interdisciplinary project that kind of sums up everything you've done throughout Constellation LVC. And last but definitely not least, we will have an e-portfolio for every student. This is a professional online presence that all of our students graduate with so that they are prepared for the real world. All this leads to our students graduating to be prepared to take on the real world. So important for us, for the past four years, Lebanon Valley has been the number one school in PA and top five in the country in job placement. And a lot of what I've already talked about leads to us having these great rankings. But there is some other things. And one other key thing is our Breen Center for Graduate Success. And they're going to push in as a first year student into that first year experience class in terms of resume building. Let's be honest, a resume is a living document. We want to make sure that what you've done throughout high school is on that resume if it's relevant. We want to make sure what you do each year is on that resume so that when you're ready to go out into the real world, internships, clinicals, things along those lines, it's ready. So that when you're ready to graduate and go for those job interviews or grad school interviews, it's ready. They're also going to work with you on soft skills, things that maybe aren't taught in the classroom. And I will use one that's close to my heart, and that's the health sciences. They're going to work with all of our students on bedside manner. That's important, and it's not always taught in the classroom, but it makes our health science students better clinicians when they go out into the real world. How do students afford this great education? Well, we have a scholarship guarantee. If you are acceptable to Lebanon Valley, we guarantee that you will get one of our five tiers of scholarship. So this is renewable for up to four years. So it is not divided by four, the numbers you see, it is multiplied by four. So that's 21,000 multiplied by four, up to $31,000 multiplied by four. There is no GPA that students need to maintain in order to keep getting these great scholarships. All they need to do is continue to make successful steps towards graduating. And graduate they do. We have over 70% of our students graduate in four years. If we do anything to cause you not to graduate in four years, we do have a graduation guarantee. So you do get to come back and take those classes for free. We will engage with you. You will get to meet with faculty each and every semester you're on campus to choose the appropriate classes to make sure that you're headed in the right direction. It's not going to be a cookie cutter education here. It's gonna be unique education to you and what you wanna study and where you see yourself in the future. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is EJ and my last name is Smith and my email is ejsmith at lvc.edu. Or we encourage you to visit our website at www.lvc.edu. We are hosting in-person and virtual information sessions, and that's good for students, 
families, or high school counselors. So we look forward to seeing you on campus and connecting with you soon. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you, EJ. Jen? Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's great to see everyone virtually, hopefully soon in person on our campuses. Um, I do love hearing about um, these wonderful liberal arts and, and sciences colleges. We have such wonderful shared values and experiences. Um, so I'd like to take some time today to share a little bit more about Worcester and maybe what's a, um, more distinctive about our programming, knowing um, that any of these schools are, are really great choices for, for your for your students. So let me just make sure I have the right screen. And now my mouse is not working for me. It's, I apologize. I'm seeing a beautiful picture of your campus right oh, now. Oh, good. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. All right. Thank you so much. So this is just some general um, information about Worcester just to set the stage. Um, uh, pretty similar numbers to what you're hearing, although we are a school of 2,000 students and we do draw students from across the globe. You know, we really truly believe that we bring the world to Worcester. And I'm going to share a little bit more about um, that as part of our mission and, and why we believe it's so important for students to interact with folks from around the world. Um, but I, you know, I do want to share, and I'll share some of these distinctions and these facts and figures as we go along. But here are the three things that we want to make sure that our counseling um, colleagues, as well as families and students really understand about Worcester. Um, you know, when you're looking and exploring liberal arts, uh, science, liberal arts and sciences colleges, sometimes we tend to be um, outside of the metropolitan areas, maybe even more remote areas. And so, um, you know, here in Northeast Ohio, we're just about an hour south of Cleveland. Um, and once students get past some of the cornfields, I think they're pleasantly surprised by the city and what it has to offer and how our students are, are very actively engaged in those activities and opportunities. So they're not necessarily always having to wait until a break um, between their semesters or holidays to be able to take advantage of experiential learning. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and obviously we're gonna share a little bit more about why our students are so special, how they really uh, support one another and um, the sense of belonging um, that we provide for our students because of the various identities and how we celebrate diversity here at Worcester. And then our cornerstone pro project um, as part of our core curriculum is that every student, not just an honors program student or a particular type of discipline, but every student completes a year long research experience alongside a faculty mentor. Um, and that has been recognized um, for over 25 years with US News Report for being one of the best in the country. So we're gonna talk about that as well. Um, the city of Worcester is located just an hour south of Cleveland about an hour and a half north of the state capital of Columbus. So we're right in the middle of some two great cities where students have access to those cities, but they also have the, a safe and friendly and welcoming community of Worcester, Ohio. We are the county seat. And so I think students take full advantage of the fact that, you know, they can have an internship with the district attorney. We have uh, wonderful nonprofits that support the county and state with the Red Cross or um, people to people ministries and um, you know, chances to really work and make a difference in this local community, both um, from a civic engagement perspective or political um, or service perspective. Uh, we also have, um, you know, just a really vibrant downtown. I think when the box stores like Dick's Sporting Goods and Kohl's and Walmart and others um, were built on our north end, you know, students love that they have the amenities of, um, you know, heading to Chipotle for lunch or studying at Starbucks or Panera Bread. Um, but we also have this really vibrant downtown that um, actually has thrived um, as those larger um, chain stores that were brought in. Our downtown said, we're not going to let this shutter um, our, our main street. And so we have more businesses than ever before and opportunities for students to just enjoy those businesses, but certainly get um, take advantage of them as well. We have two major hospital systems. So I know um, with our um, research, we do tend to attract a lot of STEM interests, particularly with pre-health professions. So I think folks are pleasantly surprised with the fact that we do have um, several of the Cleveland Clinic um, uh, opportunities. And in fact, physicians uh, that are based within the Cleveland Clinic work on our campus in our 24 hour 
Wellness Center, and so students have exposure to them. But we also have the Worcester Community Hospital with a really active and engaged health coach program. By the second semester in the freshman year, students have a chance to really engage and support um, outpatient care with um, different specialists in town. So STEM and pre-health students have some great opportunities there. But once you get to campus, you know, uh, I, I think it's great to know that no matter where you're coming from today or knowing that folks are coming from all over the world, they get to experience some beautiful seasons here in Northeast Ohio. And we do have a beautiful campus. We have nearly 300 acres. Um, the central campus is just about uh, 100 acres, but when you add in our golf course, um, our um, athletic facilities, there's a lot of space for students to roam and enjoy. And just like at Hanover, um, we do see a lot of hammocks around our campus. So we, we find that students take full advantage of, of the different seasons for sure. Um, but as I mentioned, when you have 2,000 students and nearly every state is represented, we have 48 states in that population, and then 68 countries, um, you bring in a lot of different identities and backgrounds and history. And that really um, is something that is very strategic and mission-based at Worcester. And, you know, we, we find that students, more importantly than ever, should be interacting and engaging and learning how to communicate with people very different from themselves. Right. So this is happening both in the classroom, but also, of course, residentially. We are a four year residential experience where students live on campus all four years. So they're getting a chance to live with folks. So, you know, if you're coming from Pennsylvania, your roommate um, may be from China or Los Angeles or Hawaii um, uh, or Ghana. And so it's really important to know that that's part of your learning here at Worcester. And we celebrate and support that diversity. I think that that's also really important to know that we provide the support services. Um, you know, understanding intercultural competency is part of our core curriculum. So this is just part of the everyday experience that our students have. And then not only do we bring the world to Worcester, but we also know the importance of getting folks off campus. And so, of course, we have traditional study away experiences. We also have what we call the Worcester Trek programs, where classes will travel together after spring semester um, for a more intensive, shorter experience abroad. But it is a four credit and four paid for experience for our students. And then we make sure that they're also doing some great career networking. This is Marco. He's a student from Italy who um, was one of three Worcester students um, consecutively invited to go to the Athens Democracy Forum sponsored by the New York Times. So this was pre-pandemic when Marco had a chance to do that um, and, and really um, had an opportunity to think about democracy in different formats, business, environmental, higher ed, uh, or the sector of education in general. Um, so with his uh, double major in international studies and economics, it was a great opportunity to meet some world leaders. I was trying to figure out whether it was my internet or Jen's internet. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Are we, are we back? I think we're back. Okay. I do apologize. I'm not sure what happened there, but um, we're back. So, um, so student organizations, we have over 130 different student organizations that, um, you know, our, our, our students have an opportunity to lead, uh, you know, indirectly or directly. And those obviously um, I think represent um, those diverse interests and talents that our students have. A common question is, you know, what type of student is happiest or thrives most at Worcester? And I do think it's those that want to make a difference, want their voice to be heard, engage in, you know, um, an activity or um, a, a passion that is really outside of their own. And so as you can see here, here's a great example of a Worcester um, climate strike that happened about two years ago during that international climate strike where our students left, you know, class and had a, a rally on campus and really wanted their voices to be heard and, and our um, administration and community supporting that. We also find that our students are incredibly physically active, whether that's through ultimate frisbee or tai chi or dance 
um, or athletics. We have 23 different intercollegiate athletics teams. A third of our population is involved in our varsity athletics. A third of our students are involved in music. I think we do draw a lot of students that either want to study music because we have five different degrees available in that department, but also those that might want to study neuroscience, but obviously stay very engaged in their in their love and interest in music. And so we do have scholarships that provide that option as well for non-majors. And then about a quarter of our students involved in theater and dance. I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to I'm going to skip to our final um, point of uh, and that is, you know, this intentional way that we connect what students learn in the classroom to real world experience and applied learning. And one of the best ways that we do that is through that senior capstone experience. The students refer to it as independent study or IS, but this is a class, a, one of the four classes that you take in the fall and the spring where you work one-on-one -on -one with an advisor in your academic major, where you're developing essentially new knowledge, you're taking on a project. And that project um, can be experimental, it can be creative or analytical. So when you think about research, we tend to think about a picture like this, and that is very popular. We have a brand new science center on campus. So our students, we do draw a lot of STEM students, but I think it's really important to know that research can be performance-based, it can be artistic, um, it can be more analytical. And so I think a lot of students ask, well, why? Why should I have this requirement to graduate? And it's because we know that this type of long-term research experience does um, result in the types of skills that I think employers in graduate schools, as we read in the media and our own research, are really starving for in undergraduate um, uh, undergraduates and what to expect from them after they graduate. Um, we can say that we're the premier college for mentored research, but it's wonderful when others recognize it. So U.S. News has asked presidents and provosts and deans across the country who does research best. And since the inception of that survey um, nearly 20 years ago, only two schools have made both of those lists. Um, every year since the inception of that survey, and that's Worcester and Princeton. So we're really proud of being the fully undergraduate liberal arts um, and sciences um, school of our size and scope that is recognized for that research. We know that Gallup did a great survey a few years back that um, asked those sort of same questions of, of you know, of, of students, or I'm sorry, graduates that are out in the field right now, those that are most content both in their career as well as in their personal lives, you know, what were some of those college experiences or attributes that really they felt best resonated with them and helped best prepare them? And two of those categories that really rose to the top was having a mentor in college and taking on a long-term project that was more than just a month long. And that's exactly what Worcester's doing. And, and in fact, the Gallup executive director said just that. And then lastly, a great resource for the counselors on the call today, if you're not familiar with it, Ron Lieber from the New York Times recently published his new best-selling book called The Price You Pay for College. This isn't about um, how to pay for college, but what is worth paying for college. So looking at value, sort of um, pulling the curtain back on what questions families can ask to really get to um, what I consider the nitty gritty of understanding outcomes and the experience. There's a whole section in the book on value and those attributes that are really essential for a, a strong college experience, whether that's small class size or diverse campus community, career centers that really make a difference. And Ron ends that section with a chapter um, on a school that best represents all of those attributes, and that's Worcester. So we're really proud that he recognizes that as well. And then last but not least, just um, some a basic overview of our scholarships and financial aid. Know that we want to make Worcester accessible for all families. Our average financial aid package was just over $47,000. We do offer a tuition-free guarantee for our Ohio residents um, who are um, uh, eligible for the state grant. We have over a quarter of our students that are Pell eligible. And we do have some um, for a variety of merit aid scholarships that students can um, be awarded, including those that are participating in SAGE, um, who is obviously sponsoring this today with a $2,000 annual scholarship. I will end there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. Diane? Sure.
Hello, everyone. And I have to um, second what Jen said. There are a number of really fantastic um, liberal arts schools on this call. So thank you to all of you for joining us today. I'd like to take just a few minutes and talk to you about Ursinus College. Um, I'm hoping that you can all see my screen. Yes, okay. Yeah, looks great. Great, so Ursinus College is a small liberal arts college um, that's located in suburban Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If I can advance my screen, that would be great. Okay, um, you can see from this slide, we're about 25 miles from Philadelphia. And that location gives us the opportunity to provide um, fantastic opportunities for internships. Um, we're on the BioFarm corridor um, right outside of Philadelphia. Ursinus is exceedingly proud to be recognized as one of the 44 colleges that change lives. Um, if you're familiar with CTCL, um, the colleges that were recognized um, in CTCL are those who are very interested in providing a holistic um, experience for all students. And um, we really look beyond test scores to, um, and our, our goal is really to help students become the best that they could possibly become. Um, our students that are sinus, I'm also asked often, um, like Jen, what's a typical or sinus student? Well, that's really difficult to say because the Ursinus students are involved in so many different things. You often see students who double major and major and minor and they do um, all of these things and they graduate on time. We are also a residential liberal arts um, institution of 1500 students. So our students live on campus all four years in a variety of different settings. If you've been to Ursinus, we have 39 uh, Victorian homes on Main Street, which the student, upperclassmen really enjoy. Um, and it's, it's hard to believe that that is student housing. Um, I know something that's on many people's minds is how to pay for a liberal arts institution. I saw one of the questions in the chat, you know, what's the sticker price? Um, hold your breath. The sticker price at Ursinus is 72,000. Um, so don't shut off your screen. 99% um, of our students do receive financial aid. In fact, um, the average package is about 34,000. At Ursinus, we have 60 areas of study. Um, we also have um, the ability to, for you to create your own major. Our top majors are um, biology, applied economics and business, um, HEP, health and exercise physiology, psychology and media and communication studies is often um, tied with neuroscience. So one thing that's unique to Ursinus is how we look at liberal education. Uh, we call that Ursinus Quest, and that really encourages our students to look at four large questions, which are on the screen here. And we don't expect our students to have the answer to these questions, but this frames everything that we do at Ursinus. And um, the goal is for our students to engage in thoughtful uh, communication and conversation across campus and be able to um, value a difference of opinion and um, engage with others who may think differently. Ursinus is um, part of the Centennial Conference, which is a very competitive conference for athletics. Uh, there are 25 varsity sports on campus. I often say we're a small school um, that's big on school spirit. Our students are very engaged and it's typical to see um, students who are going to a home football game and cheering on their, their, um, their colleagues and other things. We also have over 100 clubs and organizations, and like many of the other schools, you can start your own club um, if you have at least eight students. A couple things that I think are really cool um, that are big on campus. Um, Air band, you can see students practicing for weeks in the spring for um, lip syncing and dancing competition. And um, oh my gosh, they have a Nerf gun club that 
you know, they're, they're in the different academic buildings at night having um, just a grand old time with each other. Our job placement rate is about 95%. There's a few things I'd like to say about that. Um, in the sciences, particularly biology and pre-med, pre our acceptance rate into medical school is in the 90%, uh, which is pretty incredible. We also have 100% acceptance into um, law school. All of our students do participate in some type of experiential learning because we think that learning outside of the classroom is so important. So the experiential learning could be study abroad. And at our sinus college, your tuition travels with you. So there's no additional tuition um, if you study abroad. Um, it could be an internship, an externship, um, student teaching. Many of our students complete more than one experiential learning. Another thing that is unique to us is something that we call Philiax. So Philiax gives our students um, at our sinus the opportunity to live in Philadelphia um, in dorms at Drexel University for one semester while they're completing an internship in Philadelphia and our um, professors travel with them. So it's an Ursinus professor who's teaching courses in Philadelphia while giving them the opportunity um, to participate in internships. Now, a student doesn't have to live um, in Philly or participate in Philly X to um, take part in internships in Philadelphia. I do wanna talk about our merit scholarships um, for just one minute. So every incoming student at her sinus receives a scholarship of between 21,000 and 40,000. You don't have to apply for these. These are merit scholarships. So the Zachariah Scholar, um, that's 40,000 a year, that's awarded to the top 5% of the class. And we are test optional. We have been test optional for at least 10 years. The Gateway Scholarship is the most frequently awarded merit scholarship. Um, if we look at our, in, at our first year class, just to give you an idea of 420 students, over 200 of them are gateway scholars. You can get that um, one of three ways, based upon an SAT, based upon an SAT, um, or based upon your GPA. So um, also for students who have taken at least half of their courses um, very rigorous. We'll look at those on an individual basis. But the whole idea with the Gateway Scholarship is we really wanna make um, our education as affordable as possible. The Reverend Rice Memorial Scholarship um, is also 35,000 a year. And that is for students who have a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, it's based upon our very beloved um, Reverend Charles Rice, who worked at Ursinus for many years. Um, again, that does not require an application. Um, but to give you some context, about 28% of last year's incoming class um, were um, diverse students. So that's really intended to um, recognize DEI efforts um, and students' commitment to that when they come on campus. We also have Phi uh, Beta Kappa, um, if you have any transfer students. We also have 14 specialty scholarships, and these do require a separate application. So if you look at the top, um, the creative writing or the three performing arts scholarships, there's one in dance, one in music, one in theater, those replace um, the merit scholarship. And these other specialty scholarships um, do require an application and those are stackable, which means those could be added to the merit scholarship. Um, if you would like more information about any of these, please reach out. And then finally, um, I saw there was a question in the chat about um, commitment to what happens after graduation. Um, or sinus has a very involved a career and professional development office. And I've just added, um, you know, some of the graduate schools that our students have gone on 
uh, for professional medical or law degrees, as well as some of the, the companies that our sinus grads are still working for. So thank you. And I'd like to turn that over to, I think back to Ginny, right? Thank you very much. You guys have been great. We have about um, eight minutes left here. And I think there's a few questions, general questions that if you all could just take a minute to answer. Uh, one of the things that is, I think is confusing about liberal arts colleges, and both of, all of you have addressed it to some extreme, is the affordability piece. Um, and many counselors will counsel their students towards state schools, feeling that it's more affordable when, you know, in reality, your private schools can, can come out just the same. I wonder if you guys could speak to that really quickly. I'm happy to start yeah, that and then. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thanks. So um, I do think that we all have talked today about this, um, you know, uh, this commitment to access, and we do that through two forms of aid, right? We have this commitment for need-based assistance as well as merit aid, because we know that there are families that are in high need situations that will be Pell eligible or have opportunities for, for other aid opportunities. And, and so we're going to do our best to meet their demonstrated need. But we also know that there are middle income and low income families that really do still have need. It may not show through the FAFSA, um, but you know we, we want to be able to support them as well. Um, and then we also want to recognize our, the students who are performing well and showing great potential to do great things at, at our schools. So we do provide the combination of the merit and the need um, that I think makes us quite accessible. Um, we all have net price calculators. I will say, you know, just to provide a specific example for Worcester, um, we do offer a customized um, estimator. We call it the early aid estimator, uh, where we open that up in uh, May or early June of for rising seniors. And the reason why we limit it to just those students that are, are, are starting um, or really, you know, really progressing with their search into their senior year is because this isn't just a software application um, or algorithm. This is where um, families will complete an estimator online, uh, both from an academic and merit standpoint, or if they're interested, they can also include the need-based assistance. And we as humans will sit down and, and look at providing a, a very accurate estimate of both merit and need-based aid. And so know that all of us, I think, are, are trying to be as transparent as possible about that net cost and, and trying to have those conversations earlier with families and counselors so they understand that accessibility and that affordability. Thank you, Jen. Um, and the other quick question I wanted to throw out there um, since there's been articles about Cornell, et cetera, um, how's everybody handling the pandemic and your students on campus? And do our students have concerns? Um, go ahead, Rachel, I'll go after you. Um, a majority of our students and staff are vaccinated. It's not a requirement for those who are not vaccinated. They have to go through um, weekly or biweekly testing, but a majority of our community has been vaccinated and we've had at best five cases of uh, five positive cases on campus. So we're really pleased with that and um, able to stay in person the entire time since COVID started. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. Diane? We've also been in person since the beginning of COVID. And I have to tell you, um, we have a very comprehensive testing program. Um, our students are required to be vaccinated. Um, students are tested every week. Faculty and staff are tested very frequently. Um, in fact, I was just tested last night. So um, I'm happy to say that like Rachel, it's been, um, it's been very successful for us. I think we're all holding the breath, our breath, and glad that the, um, the semester is winding down with the new variant. But so far, um, things have been going well. We have a virus task force that meets um, three times a week. And you know we're looking at this new variant very, very closely. Thank you, Diane. 
Um, I think our time has come to a close. I want to thank um, our presenters. You did an amazing job. Um, and I want to thank our participants. Everyone will be see, receiving a copy of this recording. And then I also want you to mark your calendars that our next one will be the third Thursday in January with uh, RIT, WPI, and Clarkson's talking about engineering and STEM programs. Um, I wish you all a safe and healthy holiday. And um, thank you again.